Hey, welcome back, fellow scientists. All right, so first of all, I feel like I need to apologize for my attitude last video. I was down in the dumps. Teachers get that way. Teachers are humans too. I know, shocking, right? Uh, so anyways, I apologize. I'm intentionally wearing bright colors. I'm wearing my bright tie uh, the, this morning. It's, uh, I'm recording this on Wednesday morning, so I don't know if you can see that, but it's a linear tie. It's a kind of cool, right? Nourishing the earth, getting ready for spring. Um, if you look over here, uh, this is this is our best setting. This is the office right now, and we have our little plant set. We have a little greenhouse set up. We can see our tomatoes, right? Our our growing. Yeah, it's it's gonna be amazing. Uh, God is good. He is still on the throne, uh, and I just I just need to remember that. I just need to I just need to have a good attitude. Um. So, anyways, uh, having said that, we are going to jump right in <laughs> to unfortunately kind of a downer topic. Um, how humans can mess up uh, ecology. So the notes, I'll put this on one note. I, d I haven't yet, but I'll put them up there. Uh, I'm not going to do any writing because that takes too much time and I have all the writing from before. So we're just going to kind of zoom through and then I will have a little assignment for you uh, at the end. Uh, so here we go. Uh, number one, uh, climate change. Okay, it's, it's kind of a irrefutable uh, fact that we are putting more and more and more CO2 uh, into the atmosphere than we ever have in the history uh, of the human race, uh, mainly because of the internal combustion engine. So power plants, coal burning power plants and automobiles and, and different things like that. So irrefutable fact number one, we're putting more CO2 into the atmosphere. Irrefutable fact number two, a heavier atmosphere with more CO2 uh, holds more heat, right? It's just like like they've done experiments and they've made models and and it works, it's true. Uh, whatever, you know, the pastors or which is sad in and of itself, uh, or whatever, you know, uh, anyone says about, about, uh, global warming, climate change, uh, like those, those are two like irrefutable facts that you, you can't really deny. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's kind of, again, we're starting from our biosphere level, right. And then we're going to work down kind of to the, to the individual level. Um, so climate change, global warming, um, Climate change, really, not global warming. We'll talk about why why we call it climate change here in a second. But we're putting more CO2 into the atmosphere, uh, and a heavier atmosphere uh, holds more heat. It's just just kind of logical, right? We can actually measure right CO2 uh, emissions or CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, this is parts per million, right? Uh, and you'll notice there's a little peak and a little valley. So the peak is when the northern hemisphere uh, is in winter because there's not a lot of uh, a lot of leaves out. Right, and so uh, the CO2 isn't being isn't being taken in, uh, and then the the trough right is in uh, is when the northern hemisphere is in summer when it when it falls because then there's more leaves uh, and then it's actually taking in CO2. But you'll notice, uh, regardless of the of the little uh, winter summer fluctuations, uh, it's it's gradually increasing, right? And so we can go back, we can look at sprolomites, the bacteria formations, we can do ice cores, and we can measure the amount of the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, uh, methane. Uh, and then here IR, this stands for Industrial Revolution when we, when we invented the internal combustion engine. Uh, and so we can see that that just like, shoom, like skyrockets, crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, all right, so then... Uh, we go to, okay, well, you know, maybe it's, you know, sunspots, maybe it's the volcanic activity, maybe something else is, is causing the, these temperatures or, or whatever. So they take that into effect, into account, right? There are some natural variations, natural fluctuations. Here we got um, a little a little downturn, right? Right before the turn of the century, right? And then a little, little uptick, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but then we take in humans, right? Our anthropogenic factors, right? So that's, you know, it, it kind of matches. It's a little bit more of an upward trend. Uh, but then we have the natural and the human factors combined, and then that matches uh, even better what the what the model predicts and then what we what we actually see. Um, so yeah, so it's it's pretty it's pretty scientifically valid. Um, the reason why climate change is not the same as global warming is because if you call it global warming, then no offense, Mr. President, but you sound like Donald Trump. Uh, who always who always makes fun of the climate scientists when their conferences uh, get canceled because of a blizzard, right? Or something like that. Like, oh, 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 global warming canceled because of blizzard. Well, yeah, good thing, huh? It's, oh, 
hey, 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 uh, that's actually what climate change predicts is that we're going to have more and more and more severe weather events. And that's kind of what this map shows. It shows precipitation around the world. And so we see the dry areas like the Sahara Desert uh, get drier. And then we see wet areas uh, get wetter. And so it's more it's more extreme uh, weather. So that's that's kind of that's kind of explaining the the name change or the the wording change. Uh, so how does that affect animals? Well, this is a songbird from the Netherlands, and this songbird eats caterpillars. Uh, so the caterpillars eat leaves, right? So that's kind of that's kind of the food chain. We have our producer, and then we have our primary consumer, and then we have our secondary consumer. Well, leaves. Uh, because of uh, climate change, uh, leaves are appearing uh, earlier, earlier in the spring, right? Uh, caterpillars are also appearing earlier, but but the, the leaves and the caterpillars, they use two different cues, which aren't quite understood yet. By the way, all of these uh, all these examples and all these graphs are from are from your book. I think it's chapter 45. It talks about global ecology. Um, but it's not it's not quite understood yet. But the leaves and the caterpillars they're they're moving earlier. They're moving uh, towards early towards early spring, right? Uh, this songbird right here uh, it uses day length as a cue for nesting, and day length is not changing uh, regardless of how much CO two uh, humans try to put into the atmosphere. So they're staying the same. So our caterpillars and leaves they're moving earlier, right? In the in our kind of timeline or in our in our seasons. Birds aren't, uh, and so because the leaves and the caterpillars are not meshing, right? The caterpillars come out, and the leaves aren't totally ready to be eaten yet, right? And so they're eating all of the young leaves, and then the tree, you know, that hurts the tree, and then the caterpillars they could they could start, uh, but then the birds they're still hatching. They still have their their uh, little little bird babies, little nestlings, right? At the same time. And there's less caterpillars because they're, the leaves aren't ready yet. Uh, and they're just, just because of that. Um, and they miss the peak uh, of, the, of the caterpillar hatch. And so there's just less caterpillars just because the birds and the caterpillars uh, don't line up anymore. So that's one kind of consequence of, of climate change that's been pretty thoroughly studied and that, and that we can see. Uh, another one that your book mentions and is actually near and dear to my heart and maybe to your heart. Uh, this is a bark beetle, right? You guys have heard of the, the infamous uh, bark beetle. Well, climate change, warmer winters in our case, uh, wetter, wetter summers, wetter springs, right, uh, is, is an is a amazing breeding ground for these beetles. Uh, and less of the beetles die off during winter, so then more of them come back each year, uh, which, of course, then kill the trees, which then the trees provide lots of good fuel for wildfires. We haven't had any of those recently, have we? <laughs> right? Which then creates lots of smoke and you can't go camping over the summer and you can't have a campfire. When you do go camping, if you do go camping over the summer and then you come back to school and then you have to practice football or volleyball or whatever inside and or cross country, <laughs> right? Inside. And so it's just, it's just horrible. Uh, so thank uh, climate change for you, the ruin of your sports season for the past uh, couple of years or your summer camping for the past couple of years. All right. Uh, one last thing. Uh, we talked about uh, endotherms and ectotherms, uh, homeotherms, right, or ectotherms, right? If the days are hotter, uh, then they can't forage as long. So it gets too hot and then they have to go and they have to cool themselves off in the shade. Uh, some plants use temperature as a germination cue, right? So if the temperature changes, then the plants change their germination time, which can mess with all sorts of other things because plants are at the bottom of the food chain, bottom of the of the trophic pyramid. Uh, and then also reptiles, they use temperature to determine sex ratio. So at specific temperatures, uh, for, for this little guy right here, uh, at specific temperatures, like so let's say 24, right? Uh, it's a 50-50 ratio between males and females. However, if the temperature rises and gets up to like 28, uh, then maybe you have like, oh, I don't know, uh, one or two percent males uh, and then 98 or 99 percent females, which does not bode well for the future of the species, right? 
Uh, same thing for this little guy right here. As it gets warmer, then you have fewer and fewer males. Uh, and then same thing right here, as it gets warmer, then you have fewer and fewer males. So some animals use temperature to determine gender, uh, which is which is interesting, weird, uh, but true. All right, so that's, that's one thing. Moving on to another way that humans uh, mess up this good world that God gave us uh, is by using uh, too much, too many fertilizers, right? So we talked about how we have our limiting nutrients, how we have our phosphorus, and how we have our nitrogen, because that's in a lot of, uh, that's in a lot of fertilizers. So we put fertilizer on there to make the plants grow great. Uh, but then some of that fertilizer uh, runs off uh, into lakes and streams and rivers. And if it runs off into streams and rivers, then it carries it to the lake or to the ocean uh, or whatnot. And so now all of this excess phosphorus and nitrogen well, this little cyanobacteria, these algae, they're at the bottom of the food chain. They have access to the most energy. I mean, sunlight is not really a limited quantity. So if you remove or if you provide an excess of this limiting nutrient right there, then they just like go nuts. They just, their reproductive rate is like crazy. Uh, and it's so crazy that they can turn waters green or red. You can see it from space. It forms like kind of a mat. It's just like, ugh. Right. So then what that does. Right. So that um, does photosynthesis. Right. So it creates its own oxygen. So most of the oxygen right is up here, but then it creates like a big, huge shadow. And so none of the none of the plants and none of the, you know, the bottom dwelling weeds or bottom dwelling animals. Uh, basically, all of the oxygen is up here and none of the oxygen is down here. So that creates this hypoxic zone where where nothing can live. And then you have the dead and decaying stuff. And it's yeah. It's just it's it's bad news kind of kind of all around. So algal blooms uh, using too much fertilizer is is another is another way that we mess things up. Uh, another way that we mess things up is clearing land for uh, farming. We talked about this, right? We have amazing biodiversity out here, right? We clear land for farming. We take away uh, all of that biodiversity and we plant a monoculture. We plant soybeans or we plant corn or, or something like that. Right. This is kind of cool. I'm not exactly sure which city this is in. It could be London, possibly. Um, but they're they're trying to I mean, it's it's no doubt that humans are taking over ecosystems, but then they're trying to make it more and more friendly and having cityscapes and incorporating plants into into their buildings and different things like that, which is cool. Right. But it's it's kind of like, OK, we win. Uh, oh, oops. We shouldn't have won that much uh, because otherwise we're like not being kind to ourselves and we're poisoning ourselves. So I guess we I guess we do need plants right there. They didn't pay attention in their ecology classes to know that plants are the basis of the food pyramid. And if you take those out, then the whole entire pyramid collapses. Right. So that's bad. Uh, and then this is Dubai. We're actually making islands. Right. Which is crazy to, to even think about. But this is one of the palms uh, on Dubai or in Dubai. I guess uh, where they're they're actually this this whole structure all the way out here is man-made. Just dump trucks and dump trucks and dump trucks and dump trucks and dump trucks full loads of of sand uh, in this in this interesting configuration. So now every single house uh, can have an ocean front view property to other houses that are right next. Anyways, I, I digress. Uh, all right, moving on. Another way that humans mess thing up mess things up is by making plastic, right? So uh, seagulls, seabirds, right? They don't know the difference. They see something that you know is colorful and shiny, and or you know looks like food, or you know, they just kind of gobble it up. Uh, and normally that would just kind of go right through them, but plastic uh, is evil, right? And uh, and so then it kind of sticks in their intestines and it gets clogged up, and then eventually if they eat too much of that, uh, then it kills them. Right. Uh, also, you may or may not have heard about this, but the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is actually a thing. Uh, so you can see here more than twice the size of Texas. Right. It's right off of San Francisco. Uh, the densest populate or the densest concentration of plastic is 100 kilograms per kilometer. Right. So a gram a kilogram is a little bit more than a pound and a kilometer is a little bit less. I think it's like 0.6 uh, of a mile. Um, so anyways, to put that put that in comparison, uh, I found some pictures. There's lots more uh, on Google Images, but here's just kind of one. This is just out right in the in the ocean, uh, just like plastic, like lots and lots and lots and lots of, 
of plastic. Uh, which then there's other pictures of like a like a turtle that its shell is like like I don't know constricted down to here because when it was young something got caught on it like a um, soda like a, a six pack of soda uh, holder right it swam through it and it got stuck and then as it grew to like this Galapagos tortoise size then the plastic like hung on there and so so it has a hind legs and it has front legs but then the middle it's like shoo, like that. Um, so anyway, so there's there's other heartrending pictures uh, that you can feel free to look up uh, if you would like. That's another way humans mess things up. Uh, another way humans mess things up is by taking out animals that are inconvenient to us. So we talked about this idea of the wolves and Yellowstone and the elk and the aspens and different things like that. Uh, so the wolf is actually a keystone species, right? They removed the wolf wolves because the wolves were preying on cattle and sheep and different things like that. Uh, so you remove the wolves and then the elk population increases. Uh, and so they did take care of that by hunting the elk, but then people got mad that they were hunting the elk. And so again, these people, these tree huggers uh, haven't really taken ecology classes and they don't know that if you don't hunt the elk, then the elk are going to cause damage. So then uh, they, they stopped hunting the elk. And so then the elk population increased and then they eat the trees and then the trees, there's no new aspen trees. And so then the beavers don't have trees to build their dams with. And so then no trees to hold the soil in. And so then there's more erosion, different things like that. So now then we realize that we messed up. So then we reintroduced the wolves, which took care of the elk population, which now we have uh, aspen seedlings growing outside of the aspen fence and different things like that. Um, so anyway, so that's good. Uh, one keystone species that I really remember from when I was at Whitworth was uh, the sea star. Right, so here we have a whole bunch of mussels and barnacles and different things like that. You can see it's just all one kind. It's not very biodiverse, right? Uh, but sea stars love these little mussels and, and clams, and they, they just have a have a field day with them. Uh, so you can see, right, the the places where the sea stars have been, like they've already eaten, right, all of all of this stuff. So that is biodiverse, right? Not very biodiverse, but I'm sure if we could analyze a little bit better, we'd see more than just four or five different species, right? So biodiversity uh, and then and then less biodiversity. So you remove the sea stars, then everything becomes barnacles and it's just one. You have the sea stars in there and then that totally changes the whole entire ecosystem, the whole entire community. Uh, so um, hunting is good, but overhunting is bad. All right, humans are removing geographic barriers. So invasive species, right? This is a book that I read out of Eden kind of dry, but it gives you gives you some examples of, uh, of how how we've brought animals from where they used to live uh, to where they where they didn't used to live, but now they do and how that's messing with the ecosystem. Right. Probably the most famous invasive species, at least here, uh, is the zebra mussel. Right. We're trying to keep that out of Lake Coeur d'Alene and out of Lake Pend d'Oreille and different things like that. Um, so we'll talk more about that here in a second. But here are some examples uh, of invasive species. So this is kutsu, right? Kutsu, I believe it grows at like a rate of like one foot per day, possibly if conditions are right. Uh, we brought it in intentionally as kind of like a beside the highway, like ground cover erosion control thing. Uh, and it doesn't have anything that eats it. It doesn't have uh, any natural predators. So it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and it'll just cover whole forests and whole trees. And then, of course, if the kutzu, if the vine is covering the, the leaves of the tree, then that tree can't get any sunlight. And so um, the kutzu takes all the sunlight and, uh, and then the tree dies because it doesn't get any sunlight. Here's our zebra mussels. This is what I grew up with on the shores of Lake Michigan, uh, 1980s, right? Cargo ships from the Black Sea and the Azov Sea uh, took in ballast water to come back to the United States. Uh, in that ballast water, there were zebra mussels. Right, then they got back to the United States and into the Great Lakes Waterway, uh, and they let out that ballast water with the zebra mussel larvae. And the zebra mussels, because they didn't have any natural predators, uh, and they're they're filter feeders. They're like they're the primary consumers. They're at the bottom of the food chain. So they'll just like filter feed, filter feed, filter feed, filter feed, and reproduce, 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 reproduce. And they don't have any natural predators like they do over in Europe. Uh, and so they just yeah, they just proliferate. Uh, they've clogged water pipes. Um, they've clogged uh, power plant 
uh, pipes and it's just, yeah, like towns have gone without drinking water because zebra mussels clog their water intake pipes. Uh, if you if you live on Lake Michigan, you know, and you're and you're a city, you just put a pipe out in the water and you, you take in the, the good uh, lake water and you filter it a little bit, right? And then that's your drinking water. Well, the zebra mussels clog those those pipes, and so that's yeah, so that's bad. So that's that's another way that we've messed things up is by transporting species, removing barriers. Uh, here's one of my favorites, Burmese python. Right, they're really cute as pets, but then they get older and you don't have the heart to kill them, and so you you live in Florida and you just kind of set them free. Uh, in the wild, hoping that they'll die, uh, and they usually don't because they're because they're very good uh, at what they do. So they can take down, uh, you know, most mammals. They can take down large mammals like deer. Uh, they are they are very <laughs> very large uh, animals, uh, and they are they're ectotherms, right? So you can't you can't really hunt them very well because they have the same temperature as their as their surroundings. Uh, and so they can just kind of sit and wait. They can they can make a kill, right? And then they can sit and wait and just be there for like a month and just digest it. Uh, and then you know like slither off in the night and then go go find go find another thing to to kill and to eat. Uh, so that's an invasive species. Uh, basically, for Florida Everglades are getting decimated by these things. Um, there's very very few. Uh, small mammals left anymore, and now they're turning their attention to alligators. Uh, and the alligators uh, could be could be going extinct because of because of these snakes, because of these pythons. So that's another way that humans have messed things up. Uh, but the news is not all bad. We realize that we've messed things up. And this is the last slide, by the way. So hang in there. We realize we've messed things up, and so there is a branch of ecology called conservation ecology, uh, which looks at taking care of this good earth that God has given us. And then there's also a branch of ecology called restoration ecology, which acknowledges, okay, you know, we we probably uh, could have done things better. Uh, let's go back and let's and let's try to fix that, right? So you go back and you restore uh, these these lands and these areas that that we kind of have let fall into disrepair that we that we've kind of ruined. Um, so, anyways, that's how humans mess things up. That's the end of ecology. Uh, like I said in our Zoom meeting on Tuesday. What we're going to do next week is we'll just meet uh, for a Zoom session as a class and we'll just go over essay questions because that's what the test is going to be. That's what they're going to focus on. Uh, but I do want to do one more small little assignment before we actually leave this topic of ecology. So we just talked about uh, different ways that humans can mess things up. Uh, and I would like you to, to go back and to write an essay. Now, it's one of my essays. It's not one of Mr. Wells' essays. So it's not like you shouldn't spend like 10 hours on this essay. You should spend like maybe one hour, right, on this essay or something like that. So uh, it can be any form that you want. It could be a, a research essay. Uh, it could be a persuasive uh, essay. Uh, it could be a... Oh, I don't know. Kind of an entertaining essay with a with a with a point, I guess. But what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take uh, some way that we've talked about about humans messing things up, uh, and and it doesn't matter to me. You can argue against it, right? You can say, well, actually, climate change is you know not actually happening for the following reasons, blah 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 blah, uh, and then and then lay them out. Use scientifically valid sources. I would I would love to read that, right? Uh, or you could you could take like the garbage patch and. And you could say, hey, yep, that's a problem. Uh, this is what they're actually doing to clean it up. It could be more of kind of kind of like a kind of like a research thing, right? Uh, you could you could take global warming, climate change, whatever you want to call it, uh, and you could you could say, oh yeah, well, it's actually happening, and this is what we need to do to fix it, right? So it could be could be something like that. So, anyways, that's your assignment. Uh, we just talked about how humans mess things up uh, for the rest of God's creatures, which is kind of unfortunate, but we are intelligent, we can go back and we can fix it. So hopefully this has been informative and enjoyable. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the flip side.